To produce goods and services we use require raw materials and manual labor. Raw materials come from nature. These natural resources come from the earth and were not created by man. So no one can claim them as their own. Since they are basic to survival, everyone has a right to an equal share. But over time, some grabbed and monopolized resources through brute force. In other words, they seize control of the resources more than their fair share by depriving others. Feudalism became the order of the day. It was to be the stepping stone towards becoming giant private corporations. That is why, as democracy developed, certain steps were taken to protect the rights of all people, that is, each one's share of the earth. Vast national parks were created to help nature remain healthy. Community lands and water bodies could only be used by local people collectively and not for private profit. Food was not allowed to be commodified, to be something to be bought and sold and hoarded for profit purposes only. The government, on behalf of the people, maintained food reserves in case of crop failure or other national disaster. Every one was entitled to avail of public services, such as water and sanitation, education, health care, roads, and public transport. That was the form in which everyone received their minimum share. To ensure that everyone receives his or her just share of nature's bounty, every adult citizen is therefore entitled to an equal amount of credit. Over time, democracy was hijacked through manipulation of the law and justice system. When some have excess money, it is possible to bribe and corrupt those in government. Most things that rightfully belonged collectively to people have been privatized and survival has become dependent on a money system. Since man is not perfect, bribery and corruption have existed since the invention of money and banking. But the scale of it today is unprecedented. Are you aware that the international banking system is controlled by secretive private bankers of the North and the state banks of South countries are subject to their demands? That the Federal Reserve Bank of the USA is not a government institution but a private one? And most of its owners' identities are kept secret? It is not for nothing that all major religions forbade usury. And what World Bank and IMF practice is usury. Interest was forbidden because it made money from a borrower without giving anything in return. The lender was making money without working for it or taking on any risk. Worst of all, interest-based finance constantly widened the gap between rich and poor. This is the reason why today the Latin American countries are in the process of creating their own development bank based on real needs of the people and on justice. Once you have grasped the principle that money is only a measure and unregulated banking degenerates to parasitism, it is easy to understand why it leads to extremes of wealth and poverty and social instability. The financial crash which began in 2008 in USA is a major example. Money, 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 always sunny in the rich man's to restore equality and fair play, democracy first has to be restored. Part of the process requires public control of the global private banking system. The problem is that today, Democracy is interpreted by the law, and financial law has also been corrupted by rich and powerful global banking interests. They were written by big bankers and corporate lawyers, 
and rubber stamped by governments. That is why it is necessary for everyone to be financially literate. Imagine a typical economically depressed community. Unemployment is high. The few who own land or factories or businesses don't have enough jobs to offer. Those who have jobs don't earn enough to fulfill all their needs. The jobless have no assets, no capital to produce saleable goods or services. Consequently, the economy is stagnant. An indifferent or incompetent government neglects its duties. How do people get out of this rut? Is there any way for them to help themselves? There is. There are many historical examples of success. One is about a small 25 square mile island in the English Channel between England and France, known as Guernsey. The money they used was the pound sterling from England. In the early 19th century, England and France were at war against each other. Now, wars cost money because arms and ammunition are expensive. Soldiers have to be fed, transported and paid. Money had to be borrowed for waging war. And guess who financed them? The bankers. The same bankers financed both sides. For them, there was no patriotism, no loyalties. Their only god was profit. They even began to call back their loans from small borrowers to reinvest the maximum lending towards war. Money stopped coming to Guernsey. Unemployment soared. Both government and private business came to a standstill. But the governor was a wise and innovative man. He suggested the local parliament issue its own money. That became the local currency. People bought and sold and paid their bills with it. The government carried out development works and other services. The economy became so prosperous that after 10 years, banks in England began to eye it. So they set up their bank branches in Guernsey. Then they began to influence local representatives and politicians who didn't understand how money and banking work. The island was forced to give up its sovereign right to create and control its own money. So much for big banksters. Another example comes from a tiny town of 4,000 inhabitants in Austria. In the early 1930s, times were bad all over Europe and the local government was heavily in debt. They couldn't even pay their own bills and employees. Then the mayor had a bright idea. He persuaded the local authorities to issue an alternative local money in the form of tokens. Its use was officially recognized and limited to the town, but not outside it where no one would have given it any value anyway. With this money, the authorities paid people for their services and gave work to the unemployed. As in Guernsey, the people paid their bills and taxes and bought and sold with these same tokens. It also turned out to be a hugely successful scheme and boosted the local economy. What does this mean? It means that, as explained earlier, money is just a tool to facilitate the buying and selling of goods and services. In ancient times, people relied entirely on barter, which could be inconvenient, and especially in large amounts, or when someone can't find somebody offering exactly what he wants, in exchange at that moment. But they solved that problem by calculating equivalent worth with the help of beads and shells and sticks and so on. Today's problems have arisen because the price tags given to goods and services don't necessarily reflect their true worth and are often undervalued or overpriced. Then there are interest charges followed by compound interest. 